see they've got big cows and elephants and little green men. Mm -hmm. I know, it's always big when you have those animals. You can't be in the streets around there. But it's amazing though, they've just said like people that were driving past were like slowing down from there and slowing down going down. Well, I got up, it was half dark and I thought the bloody tree had fallen down. <laughs> Go. Got to get the pigs in the car. They're going out tomorrow. Out to the butcher. Love's a word you see a lot in this business. From, I'll say to people it's nicer to put love than from. Especially, um, especially the you know presenting to a member of your family. There we are. We're going to have happy birthday to an old fossil on this one. <laughs> it's a good message, isn't it? Happy birthday to an old fossil. A lot of people think that's a bit offensive, but um, it's alright if you're only 40 or 50, but if you're older than that, it's a bit rude. So, um, we put extinction is only a state of mind, and that's not offensive. 4.30. Oh, it's an early start, but that's what you've got to do. Got to go to bed nice and early because it's a big occasion and we can't afford to let anyone down. <sighs> well, my mum is over in um, Canada visiting her sister, and that's where they have them over there, one of the places. And she showed her a photograph, and mum said, Great. Dave's looking for something to get into, you know, that looks like a good thing, he'd enjoy that. So she got the flamingos for me, and um, you know, since then we've just been getting more and more and more. I'm a delivery man. Have you heard that song, I'm a delivery man? Cut from number 17. <laughs> if we get the wrong house, I get in trouble. I'm just going to have a look for number 17. It does wreck your social life. You gotta make big sacrifice. But that's life, you know. I was always told when I was in my twenties if you ever want to get ahead, sometime in your life you gotta put your eats down and you gotta make a stand and yeah, that's what I've done. And it does it does make make a mess of your social life, but then I lived, you know, a pretty good social life in my twenties. So I can't really complain. Lots of people sacrifice to get ahead or to get make something of their life. It's true, because I meet them all. High achievers out there, big houses, holidays, families, you know, good health, good education. That's what people sacrifice and work for. Of course, a lot of people, it comes easily in the 90s if, if you know, you're born into an established family. But for people that don't have it, life can be very tough in the 90s with insurance and fines and, you know, with the system the way it is. It's designed not for poor people, but for rich people. So poor people are finding life a lot harder. The less money you have, the harder life is in the 90s. There's a lot of people. So me working and building the business up, I guess, is protecting me a little bit against, you know, some of the harsher side of life. So I'm happy to make the sacrifice and do the work to avoid those situations. So if, say, for example, you know, I'm faced with you know, health problems or financial problems, I should be able to deal with them you know, with money because the business is ongoing. But I certainly don't think you know, I'm going to become a millionaire and live on a boat in the south of France you know, <laughs> over the next few years. I can't see that happening. But if I get the chance to travel a little bit and um, you know, I can afford to pay my bills, then I'm pretty happy about that. 20 more to go. One morning, the names went to the wrong house in um, Beckenham, and I had to make about 12 phone calls to figure out where they were, because we had jobs, so many jobs out that day. 
we didn't know I rang all the drivers, nobody knew where the names were, or the people who had them rang us up, and then the people that were supposed to get them rang us up, and then eventually we found out whose names they were, and the guy to rush out there and move them all, which would be so embarrassing. Those dogs, whoa. They did a good job of guarding the house, but they didn't keep the plumbing guys away. We had to get in there, otherwise it was a bitch. Oh, I just had a really, really hard delivery in North Perth. A Valentine's message for a guy and his two guard dogs, and they both barked the whole time I put the flamingos in. But whether or not the guy saw me or not, we don't know. He'll probably, he might, may have seen me, but he wouldn't admit it because the flamingos are from his girlfriend or his wife, whatever. And, um, all that is used to his dogs barking. I don't really like getting up at this time of the day. It's, it's time uncivilised, isn't it? <laughs> There's a lot of people going to get a big surprise when they wake up this morning. Find flamingos on their front lawn. Got to give yourself a bit of time. First time we've ever had this sort of delivery in a shopping centre. So I've got no doubt that there's going to get a lot of publicity on this delivery. This some more cows. And I need more sheep. I did another um, delivery and a stolen car came flying around the corner and rolled over twice, they crashed the car about three lawns down from where I was flamingoing and um, I was hiding in the bushes and the guys that stole the car were hiding in the bushes in the house next door and the police were driving up the road with the lights on looking for it for them and um, of course I didn't want to come out and you know get caught either because you know I was putting the flamingos in for surprise so there was quite a bit of activity there there it is We've got one, two, three, four, five, we've got six pigs. Six pigs and seven cows. Usually it's in our shop, you know, here it is. For everyone to see. Wish I had my camera so I could take a photograph. Someone's got a Valentine's banner over the freeway. There it is. It says to my Valentine. Jim, be my Valentine, love Lisa. Nice to see people making a bit of an effort. I went through a stage in my life where I found it very hard to cope with sitting at the traffic lights. So much time wasted just sitting here. And um, I've been getting help for it. And what they do is put me through traffic light artist therapy, where you have to sit at the traffic lights, pretend for a long time until you can learn to accept it. it teaches you how to be patient, you know, things that you can do while you're sitting at the traffic lights. So listen to the radio, do a bit of soul searching, planning, you know, rather than thinking of it as time wasted, you know, try and think of it as in a positive term. This is gonna be, we'll just walk, pull on here on this side of the stop sign. So we'll try and get as much impact as we can. Spread them out, get more impact. over here too. It'd be terrible if we got them in the wrong place. You had many tears of joy? Oh yeah, yeah, I've had um, quite a few people been really emotional because it's a special birthday and I mean, you know, people have got high expectations, it's a big occasion and I think the Fleming has helped to fulfil those expectations and give, makes it everything that people want it to be. We're now going into the city to the um, to the tallest building in Perth and the most prestigious building in Perth, to Central Park. And I've had a few, last time I went there, had a fight with the security guard, head security guard, and he, he said I wasn't allowed to go back. But I'm going now because I've got to do a balloon delivery. <laughs> and who are we targeting? We're going up there to the 21st floor, Hammersley Iron, which is a very, um, well-known West Australian mining company and um, I don't know if we'll get to see the guy, the security in these buildings are pretty tough. 
You can't just get in and out of any building, but hopefully we should be able to get straight up the 21st floor if we can't. Then we'll have to go and see our old mate, the security guard then. Because um, it's Valentine's Day and we got to get these balloons through to um, a guy called Anne, his girlfriend. I guess I was a bit of a loose end. I didn't know where I was going to go in the 90s. And yeah. One of my best friends got AIDS and was dying and really upset me and I, I just thought to myself, you know, what does the future hold? And then my parents were getting separated, so it was like for me, my life was at a pretty bad place and I guess I saw the Flamingos as a chance to get out of that place and give myself a better life, a future. That was the security you had that said I couldn't come back. Here I am again. <laughs> I hope I hope that's a good one for all you couriers out there. Feeling affects you when you're going up on a lift, I'll tell you. <laughs> it's a pretty funny feeling. So there we go. But everyone likes to see um, when someone's sending a gift. It's pretty hard not to get upset. How are you going? We just completed a very successful delivery into the tallest building in Perth there. As you can see it wasn't, um, wasn't as easy as you might have thought, we didn't just run and run out. We had to go through quite a few channels, we were being watched the whole time we were in the building. We didn't get to Maid Ian unfortunately, but no doubt by now he'd have his balloons and probably would have rang up his girlfriend to thank her. So my job's done, another successful delivery and another happy customer. Did you get some good reactions today? Yeah, I've had a few actually, yes. Yeah. Everyone knows Yeah, I've been coughing it all day long. <laughs> I was in place full on. Oh, yeah, I had a rough idea. You typically have misses, which it was. Yeah, I well, she couldn't wait to do something like that. I had a stripper for her at her 40th. She's got your back. She has, she Big has. Time. Big time. No worries. Oh, geez, they look beautiful, don't they? Look at that. All we've got here is just a sandy patch. 50 flamingos for the Valentine. Apparently, loved it. Can't believe it. No, there's males and females. Get a girl. Get a girl. That's a girl, yeah. That's the girl. That's the girl's got a high neck and the boy's got a low neck. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. That's the boy. This is the girl. No, we just say high neck and low neck. You can't be sexist. Second <laughs> We can't tell anyway. It's great, isn't it? Another good reaction today. It's just me who gets a bit tired. A customer's never done. Did you get a nice surprise? Yeah, I did. Did you? What time did you? When I got here, uh, yeah, I'm the taxi was here, you know. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, because we left about 10 past 6. And everyone was I told my wife to wake me up early, too, but she didn't. Oh, right. So she knew what was going on. Oh, right. Uh, very good. Oh, everyone, right. everyone reckoned it great. Yeah, it's the first time. Yeah. It was right. perfect, isn't it? Yeah. Which is. Right. No. And people will work in, in New Zealand and Victoria and New Zealanders will do New Zealanders pubs. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
penguins? Like, what would you know, what do you have those for? What, for what oh, fish? people from Antarctica. <laughs> How many of um, those are there? People from Penguin Island. People I from see. Penguin Island. When you wake up in the morning, there's a new day dawning. You'll stare in great surprise. You won't believe your eyes. Flamingos on the lawn, set up secretly for dawn. You'll wonder where they're from, or what it was you did wrong. I wonder who they're from, or what time they'll be gone. Flamingo, flamingo. I love to have a block of flamingo, flamingo. I'd love to have a flock of flamingos.